Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about Lush Life by the wonderful, magnificent composer Billy Strayhorn. So uh, first thing I want to say is this is a tune that you definitely need to listen to as much as you can. Uh, my personal re favorite recording is uh, Johnny Hartman and, and John Coltrane. Um, that, that whole album is wonderful, but I, I particularly like Lush Life on that recording. And there's many that have been done since then, so I encourage you to check them out. So I got my iPad out here with a nice little handy dandy chart. Um, here, as you can see, got this nice new real book chart on here. Uh, if you don't read music, that's all right, but uh, it certainly helps with a tune like this, at the very least to read chords and uh, you know s simple enough melodies. So. Um, this is a ballad, so the feel is, is a bit slow, and in the very beginning, it's got a, a nice rubato intro. So uh, the melody. Um, so if I put that with the bass. the first uh, few measures. So what I like to do, just to fill it out a little bit, and then you know, I throw a little Chopin type run in there. my last video on downtime I actually showed you this voice voicing <laughs> so I like to play D flat major six chords like this Next thing that's going on is so uh, we got So what I like to do to fill that out is uh, keep this voicing. And you gotta have some strong pinkies to play this. You can, you can even do that if you want, throw that 11 in there. That sounds pretty good until you get that. thing is you can play a nice little uh, just a C augmented triad you can do that over uh, D and of course you throw that up throw that B in there too you get that nice 13 
we got this 2 5 to F minor. I like this voicing for 2 5 ones, uh, minor 2 5 ones. G minor 7 flat 5 to a C7 flat 9 flat 13. Try tone sub, just go down a half. So you got that F minor, minor nine chord. It gives you that minor six sound. Got that nice little Dorian sound. So I'm a huge fan of this voicing. The 11th is on top. Um, so if you play just perfect fifths all the way up, you get the, the 11th on top. Actually, another thing I like to do is, is um, instead of playing a D13 sharp 11 after this, I might actually play a D major 7 sharp 11. It's pretty smooth voice leading. Instead of, here you go. And then uh, the melody after that is going to be an A flat, so I like to... So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool thing. So now we got the next page. Five, two. So I, I like to do this part like this. So it's a nice two five. Just two five one in E, e major. is on top of this chord. And of course, you can add some. You can, do, you can do all kinds of alterations. I usually keep it pretty simple here. because it sings the most if it's if it's higher in the chord Technically, I want to point out the fact that um, technically, based on what the melody is doing, um, this section right here, every time that happens, 
that 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 is technically more of a D7 or D13 sharp 11. That gives you that D uh, dominant seventh kind of tonality since you have that uh, flat seven right here. But the, but the next time when you go like this, technically that. Uh, my bad. Uh, I'm tripping. Sorry about that. So so yeah, you have the 13 versus the the minor seventh. So one kind of implies that 13 thrown in there, and the other one it's not necessarily in the chord. But you can add it in the chord just to make it a little bit spicy. Now you got so this is pretty cool. You got that G, technically G flat, F sharp, however you want to think about it. Next part. There's that voicing again. Flat, flat nine. And then you got. I like to do a little chromatic walk ups like that. out because this is a common voicing it's sharp five sharp nine voicing so you can just go um, the melody is the sharp nine in this case so sharp nine is already on top so you can just take this up chromatically and then it goes up a whole step but you can kind of keep the same shape tricks for uh, dominant seven. I got that from Bill Evans actually. Um, you should check out him playing um, Freddie Freeloader. He does that in his solo. So it's just a, it outlines an augmented uh, triad with you know the octave on top. And he's just going down in, in uh, whole whole tones. So tone stuff. So hold tone. Or you can do it in thirds. And so this is all just to give yourself a, a nice dramatic ending, um, you know, which is typical for ballads. Um, and, you know, just creates effects and moods and colors. Um, so it can be pretty fun. So one thing I'll say about this tune, this tune is tough. This is a really tough tune. Um, I've more recently been working on it, and uh, yeah, it's, it's hard, especially you play it with vocalists. Now you got to take it through a bunch of different keys, um, and that could be a, its own challenge just because this tune is, is kind of atypical in the way that it's composed. Um, so, so yeah, but that's, that's you know, intro, intro to Lush Life. Um, definitely get the chart, read it, listen to a bunch of recordings, and uh, hopefully this will help you play it on piano and in a nice solo piano, you know, arranged sort of way. Um, but that's it for Tutorial Tuesdays for this week. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And uh, shameless plug, to two days from now, Wednesday, uh, January 13th, I will be playing with Chris Fun, Warren Wolf, and Kelton Norris. And uh, yeah, we'll actually be playing Lush Life. So, so uh, please check that out. It'll be on the Strathmore Strathmore website, and I, I might actually link that in this video. So thank you so much for watching, and have a nice day.